Hey guys, welcome back to more Reddit stories about entitled people, insane people, and all that kind of stuff. So make sure to subscribe for more Reddit content and we're getting right into today's stories. Teacher wouldn't listen, so the entire class complied and he got fired. This happened in the early 2000s in my junior year of high school. The district had just built the third high school in our city and most of the teachers were new. The band director was one of those new hires. He was qualified for the job but had zero people skills and was extremely abrasive towards students. He had previously taught university and could not wrap his head around the fact that high school students are not college level music majors who live in practice rooms and write symphonies in their sleep. His normal behavior consisted of berating students for not knowing university level curriculum, talking down to everyone about how he can't understand why they were so incompetent, and stopping rehearsals to go on long tangents about things that had nothing to do with music. Every day at least two to three students would leave class in tears. We complained to the higher-ups, and they repeatedly brushed us off. He made students hate attending his music classes, and many dropped band and orchestra as a result. One of the classes he taught was supposed to be Intro to Music Theory. For those who don't know music, this would be a class that should typically teach things like different types of chords, the definition of music symbols, the logic behind key changes, etc. At the first class of the year, there were about 25 kids enrolled. Most of these were music and drama kids who wanted to be teachers or performers in the arts one day. On the first day, he handed us a quiz because he wanted to see how much we knew. I think there were maybe three to five kids who were able to attempt a single question on the quiz. Not one got a single answer right. That's how advanced it was. Imagine signing up for what you think is a basic pre-algebra class and walking into advanced calculus. This teacher spent the entire class period berating us for not being prepared when no one could even attempt his quiz. We told him, this is an intro class, none of us have learned anything like this before. And his response was, really? I thought this was an advanced class. The next class period, there were maybe 15 kids enrolled. He did the same thing, asked us to perform something we can't even understand, and then berated us for not being prepared. At every class, he would say, I thought you were all musicians. This is supposed to be an advanced class. By the end of the second week, there were six students left enrolled in this class, including myself. He softened up slightly to those of us who stayed and seemed to think we were his prized students and that this was his class of elites. Think Professor Slughorn from Harry Potter. In truth, we all thought he was insane and cruel, but the six of us had sufficient music background and experience to understand a fraction of his lessons. Without the bell curve, we all would have failed his class. A few months go by and we are at the end of the first semester. By now, every student connected to music in the school hated this guy, and repeated complaints had done nothing to fix the problem. The admins filed away every complaint, but never did anything more than remind him that he's supposed to be more kind to students. He changes nothing and still berates students and makes them cry. So when it comes to the final exam for his theory class, he decides that he wants to give it to us early, so that on the day the final is supposed to be scheduled, we can have a class party instead. Of the six of us left, four of us have the same period after his class together as well. That class was AP English, and we were prepping for the AP test. We had no problem with the class party in music right before the AP prep exam, so we didn't complain. The day comes of our music final exam, and after we finish the test, he tells us that for our class party, he wants to take us all to breakfast at a new IHOP that opened 20 minutes away. His class was first period. We try to tell him all the issues with this plan. We aren't allowed to leave campus without permission slips. It was a closed campus policy due to an incident where a student who left campus for lunch got hit by a car and was killed. We will not get back in time for second period, which is a final exam. He doesn't have permission to remove us from the campus. What if there is an emergency and we are unaccounted for, because we aren't even at the school? His solution was to tell us that after the start of class on our final class day, he would be going to IHOP and if we wanted to join him, that was our choice. But if we didn't, we would have to stay in the classroom and not bring attention to the next, that there was no class and no teacher. Without talking about it to each other, the six of us saw an opportunity to finally get the admin's attention to the complete disregard this teacher had for rules and policies. We made sure to inform our English teacher that we might be late to class on the day of the final due to a class field trip for music theory. 
She was irritated and reminded us that this final was very important and that she would not give us extra time if we came in late. We told her that we understood and gave her details about where we would be and what we would be doing and who we would be with. She said she still expected us to be in her class. On the day of the final, we all went to IHOP. It took forever to get there because of construction and forever to get our food because the restaurant was newly open and had a large number of customers. We got back to the school halfway through our second period class. The admins were waiting for us. Security was waiting for us. My English teacher had called the front office to complain that four of her best students were missing and that she was fairly certain we weren't even on campus. The admins had checked attendance and saw that we were all marked present that morning and they had searched the entire school looking for our class. The four of us walked into our English final to a livid teacher. We knew she was pissed at us, but couldn't punish us beyond saying we had the same remaining time as the rest of the class, since we had been with the teacher in our absence. None of us did as well in the final as we could have if we had the full 87 minutes, but we were doing well enough in the class already that the lesser marks didn't affect our overall grade too much. The band teacher had a private reprimand that was so loud the entire school could hear it. He was confused as to why the administration was upset that he took minor children off campus without permission or notice, without proper school transportation or even a good reason. He stayed with his usual attitude, but this time towards the admins. Why are you guys so incompetent about this? They are old enough to drive, what's the problem? The English teacher, who I actually adore and was one of the best teachers I've ever had, absolutely went mama bear on the administration about how they could continue to employ someone who disrespects the other teachers so much as to deprive his students of their final exams and put them in potentially dangerous circumstances. He told us to drive ourselves to the restaurant and any accidents or medical issues would have been the school's fault. He was fired later that day. Many of the students had a gleeful but confused reaction since the six of us weren't talking to anyone about it. All most people knew was that this tyrant of a teacher was gone. We didn't spread the story very much of how it happened because we still feared being reprimanded for our involvement, since he technically gave us a choice to go with him or stay. But I always smiled when people gossiped about what the final straw was that got him fired. I, female, was slapped in the face by a male guest. I'm the general manager of a busy extended stay hotel. On July 1st, a couple checked into the hotel for 31 days with a dog. They had a TPA, filled out paperwork and paid pet fees with no mention of a service animal. On July 3rd, I was walking the fourth floor and saw the female come out of her room, presumably leaving the dog alone in the room, because the dog immediately began scratching on the main door incessantly, as well as barking the entire time I was on the floor. At my property, if a dog is left alone in the room, it is required to be crated at all times while alone. The guests received a notice that evening, reminding them of the rules they agreed to at check-in regarding the crate and the incessant barking, and let them know if any damages occurred due to the dog scratching the door, they'd be responsible. Very professional note, I use ChatGPT for my notices and proofread everything before handing out. The next day, the female came to the desk and accused the staff of stalking and harassing her and her service dog. On July 8th, another staff member and three guests reported that the female let the dog off the leash while outside, and the dog was running wild and went after two other dogs on site. On July 9th, the guests received another notice regarding the rules and that the dog must remain on a leash at all times when outside of the room, and they must be in control of the dog. That evening, the female guest again came to the evening staff going off and accusing us of stalking and harassing them. She's a vet and that's a service dog and we are discriminating against her and her service animal. She left her phone number for me to call the next day. I attempted, but there was no answer. On the morning of July 11th, the female came to the desk to speak to me. She instantly had an attitude and insisted that I knew who she was, so I better not play effing stupid with her. The only time I'd seen this woman previously was in passing on the 3rd, when I saw the back of her leave her room when her dog was barking and scratching. I did not know who she was nor did I know what room she was in. We are a 121 room property and I do not have every guest memorized. She kept on with the attitude and going off about us stalking, harassing, and discriminating against her as a vet and her service animal. 
I pulled up the video footage of her check-in and showed her that she nor her partner made no mention of a service animal at that time. I attempted to ask her the two questions, but she was too busy screaming and being a Karen to listen. I told her I was done with her poor treatment of staff and they'd broken too many rules, so I was now asking them to leave. More screaming, so I went to the back to call the non-emergency number for assistance. When I came out of the back office, her male partner was now standing there screaming. He was going off about discrimination against a vet with a service animal. He hopped up on the window at the office and was pointing his finger in my face while screaming. I asked him repeatedly to get down, I didn't feel safe, and he refused to move. By then several other guests were in line behind him, and when I asked him to please move out of the way so I could help other guests, he screamed that he wasn't moving until the police came, and told the other guests they needed to leave because I wasn't going to help them. We have a big wooden window that we can pull down and lock to close the desk. With him still sitting on the desk I asked him repeatedly to get down because I didn't feel safe. He refused to move and I got the window halfway down. At that moment he reaches across the desk and slaps me clear across the face and grabs me by my collar. I ripped myself away not saying a word and he hopped down as I closed the window the rest of the way. We have a small plastic sign that informs guests to use the phone in the lobby to call us if the office is closed, and apparently that hit him as I was closing the window. He immediately screams, That's assault! Bitch, you're going to jail! You're going to jail! Literally two seconds after he slapped me in the face. During all of this, the female is recording me, while they have three house cameras that have also captured the entire thing. The police show up a few minutes later and talk to these two Karens first, then they speak to me. I show the camera footage, I press charges, and the man is arrested. The woman states she doesn't have a vehicle here and has to go get her truck before she can gather their things, and she'll be back here at noon to do so. One o'clock runs around and another staff member spots both of their vehicles in the back. My guests are required to have parking passes so we knew they were their vehicles. So we assume she snuck back in to get their things, but she wasn't supposed to be back without a police escort. Another employee goes to check the room, and they aren't up there and all their things are here. We check the cameras and both their vehicles had been there all morning, so she lied to the police about getting their vehicle. I called my boss and he told us to go ahead and bag and tag their things, so she'd have no reason to come back into the building when she returned. He also instructed me to take a video of myself entering the room for the first time. I did, as well as photos. Another staff member bagged and tagged everything and about 30 minutes later, both the male and female show back up to collect their things with the police. We bring their belongings down and they immediately claim they are missing a gun, which is not allowed inside the building and there are signs everywhere stating this. They find the gun and their things. They then claim they're missing a thousand dollars cash and a GoPro camera. Fortunately for us, I took close-up photos of where they claimed the cash and camera was, and it wasn't there the first time we entered the room. Fast forward to Monday and we are getting incessant calls to the property, asking for me by first and last name. Someone calling finally mentions that they're calling in regard to the videos posted on TikTok. I find the videos, and while I'm doing nothing wrong in them, the captions explain things very differently than they actually happened. Unfortunately, I am unable to reply or post publicly as part of my job. The calls to the property actually began Saturday and they were at their height Monday. So far today, nothing. Well friends, that's going to be all for today. Thank you for watching. As always, I really appreciate it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already for more Reddit stories. So I'm out of here. Have an awesome day, and I'll see you all next time.